We, uh, we looked a couple of weeks ago um, at the simple and the scorner. And I mentioned that there's a, a number of, of different types of people that, that uh, um, Solomon talks to us about. We all right there? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. And th there is, I, actually, I had five, and you guys named about 12 more, but nonetheless, <laughs> we're going to stick with the five that I, that I mentioned. And today we have the great privilege of looking at the fool. <laughs> is that a privilege? How would you describe a fool? Someone who never learns. Someone who never learns, okay? How would you describe a fool, Wayne? Someone who says there is no God. Someone who says there is no God. Hmm. Sounds familiar. <laughs> oh, you got them both. I really, I really thought you were only going to get one. Those verses are almost identical. Psalm 14, 1, Psalm 53, 1. There's just a slight change. It says the same thing, but there's just a couple, just a slight change in wording on the, on the second part. Very good. Very good. Someone else. How would you describe the fool? Someone who doesn't listen to good advice. All right. Good. Anybody else? How would you describe a fool? Brother Wayne. Yeah, and expecting a different result. And they say that's the definition of insanity. So, right? Keep doing the same thing, hoping for a different result. Someone else, what do you think? How, do you, how, would, how would you describe a fool? Nobody's given any good characteristics. Is there any good <laughs> characteristics? Okay. The word fool, the word fool comes from the Latin word. Now, I don't speak Latin, all right? And if you saw how I move my feet, I can't do any of the Latin moves either. But, uh, but the word comes from the, from the Latin word follis, F-O-L-L-I-S. And that word actually literally means bellows. How do you think we compare a bellows to a fool? What's a bellows? It gives air. It gives air. It is a windbag. All right, it's basically what it is. And that's what a fool is. It, it, it comes from the same word. There's just, it looks like there's lots there, but what's inside? Nothing, okay? Nothing is there. There's no substance. In, that, in, the, in our Bible, the word fool in, in, in the Old Testament, all right, specifically we're, look, we're looking through the book of Proverbs, and I got an interesting stat for you at the end. I'll, I'll tell you about how the word, where this comes from. But in... in uh, in the Old Testament, the Old Testament was originally written in two different languages. What were those two languages? Go on, talk to me. One of the main language was? No, not Greek. New Testament was written in Greek. The Old Testament was written in? Wayne? Hebrew and the Aramaic or the Chaldean, okay? Like Daniel, the book of Daniel was written, not written in Hebrew. It was written in, in, in uh, um in Chaldean or, or in Aramaic, possibly Aramaic, okay? But um, it, the word Hebrew, all right, the word fool that is translated in our Bible, fool, there's three words in the Hebrew that, and then they all translate as fool. The first one is kessel, and that is the fool that is clueless, all right? Basically, like I gave a long definition, but it really comes out to me as, as somebody who is dull of thinking and, and is clueless, all right? The, the, the next one, I don't know if I'm pronouncing these right, because again, I, I don't know how to speak Hebrew, but ewile, ewile, and that is somebody who is morally corrupt, all right? It's a perverted fool, all right? And the next one you will probably recognize, but the word in Hebrew is nabal, and that word means fool. You may remember that the, the account, Bible account, where, who is Nabal? See if you can tell me the Bible account. Who is Nabal? Brother Wayne? He's Abigail's husband, all right? And you remember when, when David had, um, and David's men had uh, protected Nabal's uh, shepherds and their sheep, and they, been, they said that they were like a wall around them at night, so nobody else got in. They, 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 they helped out, and, and David sent his men to go to um, Nabal and to ask for some food. You know, they, they'd done all this helping them, and, and Nabal, 
You know, he went off on a rant, why should I give this to this, this guy? You know, there's all kinds of people making insurrections, you know, and, and getting a group of people around. And how do I know this David guy? You know, everybody knew who David was. What had David done? He would killed Goliath. He would won all kinds of battles for Saul, all right? But at any rate, David got mad and he was going to go in there and he was going to wipe them out. And Abigail found out what had happened. She didn't, she didn't see what the, the messengers were at first. One of her servants came and told, told her this whole story about what Nabal had said. And she got a whole bunch of stuff together and put them on some donkeys and, and tried to run out to catch David before he came in and did what he was going to do and killing everybody. All right? And Abigail says this in 1 Samuel chapter 25, and verse 25. It says, Let not my Lord, I pray thee, Regard this man of Belial, even Nabal. For as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. Can you imagine naming your kid something that means you're a fool? <laughs> At any rate, that, that, that's what his name meant. And she says, Just, this, is what, this is what his name means, and that's exactly who he is, all right? Now, we're not going to differentiate as, as we look through. We're going to look at several verses this morning in, in, in Proverbs, and we're going to bounce around to some other books as well, but basically in Proverbs about fool. And we're not, we're not going to differentiate between these three words because they're all, a fool is a fool, all right? There's different ways of being a fool. We can see the, the person being dull, the person being perverted, or the person that, uh, this one, this navel means stubborn, brutish fool. That's what that, that word means. But they're just, they're stuck in their ways. They're not going to, like, like what Deborah said, if they're told something, they're not going to change. They're not, they're not going to learn from what, what, what they've heard, all right? So I want you to take your Bibles, and let's go, first of all, to, just to Proverbs chapter 1, okay? Proverbs chapter 1. And if I take you to some other verses, keep your finger in Proverbs, because we're going to read a lot of verses in the book of Proverbs. But it starts out in Proverbs chapter 1 in verse 7. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instructions. The first characteristic I want to talk about with, with a fool is a fool won't learn from God's word. They won't learn from the wisdom that is right here in, in God's word. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. They're not going to have any part of it. The, the part of the fool... The fool, it, it's, he's not a fool because he lacks IQ. Like so many other things, and it keeps coming back around to the man is a fool because of his heart, not because of his lack of IQ. I've, I've met some people that, are, that lack IQ, and they can love God, and they can serve God, even though, you know, he might say they're not the sharpest knife in the drawer or not the brightest light on the tree or you know, all your little, little sayings in there. And I know some people that are, that are handicapped mentally. But you know what? They're not fools. They love God. You know, it, it, it is... It, you know, I, I think of, of, of those with, 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 like, Down syndrome, all right? And they have that extra chromosome, and I, I call it like the happy one, because they're always happy. And you know, and you get them in, into a, a church setting, and, and they love God. They're lacking some IQ, but you know what? They're not fools. They're not fools. They're a lot smarter, a lot wiser than those that, that would just shun God in, in, entirely. As Brother Wayne said, Psalm 14 and Psalm 53, verse 1, you know, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. In Romans chapter 3 and verse 18, it says, there is no fear of God before their eyes. They have no fear of God. That's the fool. I don't, I don't, I don't care about God, all right? And there's those two verses with the next part of my, my notes here. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works, and there is none that doeth good. That's the fool. That's the fool. Even his own father... Second point in Proverbs chapter 15. There's a lot to do with, with, with uh, the fool in Proverbs chapter 15 and Proverbs 26. We're gonna, so those, those two chapters especially we're going to look at tonight. But his own father can't instruct a fool. It says in Proverbs 15 and verse 5, it says, A fool despiseth his father's instruction, but he that regardeth reproof is prudent. How many have known somebody who just won't listen to their father? Yeah. 
you know, and how's that, how's that saying go? You know, I didn't realize how smart my dad was until I got to be, he got a whole lot smarter once I hit about 30, <laughs> you know, it's, it's their, when, when they're teenagers, and I guess that's kind of a, a, a phase that, that people go through, probably most of us have went through that too, where, you know, we, we, you know, we get to that 16, 17, 18, and we think we know more than our dads do, all right, but a fool, a father can't even instruct a fool. You can't debate with a fool. Proverbs 29, 29 says, If a wise man contendeth with a foolish man, whether he rage or laugh, there is no rest. Have you ever tried to reason with a fool? And the lines that they come up with, I've had this with, with guys when I, when I worked at the fire department, and we'd be talking about some stuff, and, and, it was, and, and you just kind of, where does that come from? You know, you're, 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 this is complete logic sense here. Like, I can understand some things. You know, they might not believe it. You know, they're, they're not saved, and I understand that. But there's, there's certain things that just don't make any sense because you can't debate. You can't really argue with a fool because they'll tell you that, that, that you know, snow is black. You know, it is. And, and, and you, you look at it, and you just clunk your head against the wall a couple of times, but you can't. And then the Bible's clear here. It says, if a wise man contendeth with a foolish man, whether he rage or laugh, there is no rest. One of the problems with, with, a, uh, with a fool and the fact that they won't listen to what God's word says is that they think that they are on the top of the world. They have got everything figured out. You ever met somebody like that? They have the answers. They, they, they know everything, all right? Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 21. It says, folly is joy to him that is destitute of wisdom, but a man of understanding walketh uprightly. Folly is joy to them. They love it. They love the fact that, they, that, that, that their logic is just crazy logic and that, they're, well, we're different from everybody else. But, you know, another thing that, that happens, and they will laugh at you when you warn them about sin. In Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 9, it says, Fools make a mock at sin, but among the righteous there is favor. They laugh at, at sin. You know, I've, 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 I've seen this in, in, in entertainment, you know, and, and, and it, it's like I don't, I don't watch these guys, but some of the old rock stars and stuff like that, the things that they would do, you know, to to bring people in. There was that one guy who would take a bat and bite the head off the bat and just kind of doing wacky stuff like that. All right? Who was that? Yeah, it was one of those two. All right? And, and, and they, they laugh at sin. I, I just thought of this now, but that, that Ozzy Osbourne guy, like, he's got, he, he'll tell you how many women that he slept with in the thousands. He kept track of them all. Like, he just laughs at this. This is just... This is just whatever to him, all right? Fools make a mock of sin. Does a guy lack intelligence? No. He doesn't lack, doesn't lack IQ, but I'll tell you what. He certainly lacks holiness, and he certainly lacks wisdom. And according to God, he's a fool, all right? They remain fools because they can't focus on what's important. Take your Bibles. Come with me to Proverbs 17. Proverbs 17 and verse 24, it says, Wisdom is before him that hath understanding, but the eyes of a fool are in the ends of the earth. You know what? He can't focus on what's right. He can't, can't see what is right. And our focus is so important that our focus remains on God. I did a, uh, um, it was a driving thing to, to help, help people drive drive buses better is what it was. And they showed this video. And it was, I don't know if any of you have ever seen this video before. It's been out for a long time. And uh, I thought of maybe someday getting a hold of it and, and showing it to you, but I'm not going to bother doing that. But it, it was kind of hilarious because there's six people in this video. And three of them are wearing a black shirt. Three of them are wearing a white shirt. And they have basketball. They have, a bas they have two basketballs. All right? And the quiz at the beginning is, Count how many times the white team passes the basketball. 
all right? And they would just, they're walking around, and they're walking in and out of each other, and they take it, and they just, just bounce it on the floor, and they're passing it. And I was watching this video, I'm like, I'm, it was, I've been a, it's a challenge, all right? It's all kind of, so I'm, I'm going to get this, all right? And they're, and they're walking around, and they, and they pass this basketball, and I'm counting, one, two, three, four, five, I don't know, it was 15 or 16 was, was the number, I can't remember, you know, and, and then at the end, there's, there's like 200 of us there, you know, and, and they ask, how many times did they count the basketball? You know, they come up the numbers. I said, no, it was this number, you know. And I didn't say it out loud, but just, just to the people that were around my table, and I was right, and I thought, ah, that's pretty cool. I'm pretty observant. And they said, how many of you saw the gorilla? <laughs> what are you talking about, gorilla? <laughs> Have you seen that video? I've seen two videos like it. They use that in our CRM Yeah, well, what are you talking about, this gorilla? Well, they rewind the video, and you watch it again, and in the middle of it, this guy dressed in this gorilla outfit walks into the middle of the screen, dead center of the screen. And he's going like this, and then he walks off. I didn't see the gorilla. All right, and, and the background, it was red when it started. It was gold when it was finished. I said, how many of you noticed that the background changed color? I didn't see that. And how many of you saw that one of the people on the black team left in the middle of the game? I didn't see that either, but I counted how many times the white people passed the ball. You know why? That was what my focus was on. But how did I miss the gorilla? I don't know. Ian. They got the red lights, but they hit the kid. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. I saw the lights, but I didn't see the kid run across the road. But, you know, it, it, our focus is, is very important. And one of the reasons that the, the, the fool is a fool is because he can't focus on what is right. He focuses on himself. He focuses on whatever, all right? But not the right thing. Reminds me of... The rich man in Luke chapter 12 and verse 20. What does a rich man focus on? Do you remember that? He focuses on his wealth. And what does God say to him? God says to him, thou fool. Thou fool, tonight you're coming. Tonight you're, you're, is the end, of your, the end of your life. But he was focused on the wrong thing. And fools, wisdom is before him that hath understanding. But the eyes of the fool are in the ends of the earth looking all over the place, all right? Fools won't learn from the Word of God. Fools also lack speech control. They lack control of their speech. Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 2. Take your Bibles, come with me there. It says, The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. It just keeps coming. No logic, no whatever there, there to it, no right, righteousness to it. It just pours out of them, all right? They speak often with a, a proud, know-it-all attitude. If you're in chap Proverbs chapter 15, just go back to Proverbs chapter 14 and look at verse number 3. It says, In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride, but the, whip, the lips of the wise shall preserve them. They have that attitude that, you know, they don't want anything to do with God, but they've got all the answers. They've got all the answers, all right? They speak without thinking first. Look in chapter 18, verse number 13. It says, He that answereth a matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. He that answereth the matter before he hears the whole thing. He's already got the answer. You know, it, it's amazing as I, was, as I was doing this study this week and, and looking through all of these verses I have underlined in my everyday Bible. You know, I'm thinking, well, God really poked on me on, on a couple of these things. And I think sometimes we can slip into being a fool. And, and not necessarily being a fool, but doing the foolish things. And, and especially here, answering a matter before you hear the whole thing. You know, and you already got your wisdom that you're going to impart, all right? It is difficult to warn a fool against anything because they already know it all. And you try to show them that, that where they're headed. Or you try to show them what the result is going to be, and they won't listen because they already know it. They already know all the answers. That's a fool. That's a fool. He that answereth the matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. More on, their, on the tongue is fools 
specialize in lies and slander. That's what fools specialize in. Look at chapter eight, chapter 10. Okay? Verse number 18, it says, He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is what? Is a fool. He that hideth hatred with lying lips. How do you hide hatred with lying lips? You hate that person, but they can't tell from your, from your words when you're talking to them. But the deeds show it out, outside of that. All right? He that hateth, hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth slander is a fool. Verse, chapter 17, verse 7. This is, this is a shocking verse. Excellent speech becometh not a fool, much less the lying lips a prince. All right? Fools specialize in lies and slander. You know, Jesus warns us to be careful of what we listen to, of what we hear. Because, I don't know, if you're like me, you know, being a Christian, and sometimes I'm kind of gullible and, and I'll believe what's, what somebody tells me, you know, I'll, I'll think that they're being honest with me, at least right off the bat until they show their true colors and then it's, then it's hard for me to kind of trust them again. But... At right off the hop, I'll, I'll have a tendency to, 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 to trust what people do. Like I, when I tell somebody something, I'm trying to tell them the truth. I expect them to do the same, and that's not always the case, as we can see here. All right? But Jesus tells us in Mark, keep your fingers in Proverbs there, but come to me to Mark chapter 4. Actually, I'll just read the verse for you. Mark chapter 4, verse 23, in the first part of verse 24, it says, Jesus is speaking here, and he says, if, if any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto them, take heed what ye hear. All right? You, you got to pay attention to what you listen to and who is speaking. All right? And not be gullible, but, but to, to weigh those words with, with what it's, it tells us in here. All right? And, and to make sure that, that what we're listening to is the truth. There is, there is so many podcasts and um, Speakers on TV and, and so forth, that they, that these guys have, have these shows and they're always imparting their wisdom, but you've got to pay attention to where, where are they coming from, you know? Are these men godly men? These ladies, are they godly ladies? You know, if, if they're not, then you know what? What they're telling you is, is that some of it might be true. Some of it might be right, but it's tainted. And then they'll slip in the stuff that's wrong and you don't notice it because, well, this was right, this was right, and this was right. A, B, C is right. Obviously, D's got to be right too. And it's not. Okay? And, and, and they'll, they'll bend you. It's like Brother Wayne driving his truck. He would he, always amaze me at, at how, how well he knows the road. Oh, yeah, you go down this road and you take guy 75 east and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, okay, Wayne, just... Tell me left, go 12 miles, turn right, okay? But at any rate, one day we were, we were heading down, I might have told you this before, but we were, we were going down to uh, South Carolina to go golfing. And it was the middle of the night. We'd always leave, like, right after church on a Sunday night, and then we would drive all night and, and, and get there for our 1 o'clock tea time, all right, <laughs> and, and have a round of golf. And anyway, we're, we're driving down the road, and, and Wayne's asleep, and I'm driving, and, and then Wayne wakes up. I said, okay, Wayne, where are we? Oh, about a quarter mile out of Fancy Gap. It's in the middle of the night. How do you know where we are? Just like looking out, the, like we're, we're covered hundreds of kilometers. But when you're driving, okay, when you're going on a way, and, and Brother Gord, he's already asleep for a long time there. All right. The one time he tried to stay awake, it was hilarious, okay? <laughs> All the things, stories he was telling us, it was funny. But anyway, we're not going to go there. Right, Brother Gord? Okay. But when you're, when you're driving, okay, because I did this to Wayne. He wasn't real happy. You picked on me for years for this. You miss an exit or turn the wrong way on that exit. And, 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 you, and you're just, just a little off, right? You're only just a little off. It's not a big deal. But if you don't wake Wayne up for a couple hours, we're in the wrong state. <laughs> okay. Where are we? I don't know where we are, but you missed this turn. Maybe. I don't know. But the, the farther you go... The longer you go, the farther away from where you're supposed to be. Like, that would happen to Ian if you're supposed to go fly at, at I don't know, at this heading and you, you change it one degree. Where are you going to be in an hour, Ian? That's a rumor. 
yes, they were shooting at our 747, but <laughs> I didn't know it was wrong airspace, okay? But it, it, if, it, if you just change that little bit, all right, down the road, it just, you're, you're a long way from where you need to be. So it depends on, that's why God warns us is that where we're listening to. Because if they just tilt you a little bit and you keep going in that direction, you're a long way from where you're supposed to be, all right? It's so important, all right? Fools, aside from the fact that they won't listen to what's in God's word, and fools, aside from the fact that they have difficulty controlling what comes out of their mouth, fools also have difficulty with self-control. They have difficulty with their temperament, all right? In Proverbs chapter 12, in verse 16, it says, A fool's wrath is presently known, but a prudent man covereth shame, all right? It, 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 when a fool gets upset, it's, it's known right away, okay? And, and, and because they can't control their temper, in chapter 14, in verse 29, it says, He that is slow to wrath is of great understanding. You know what? We are all going to get upset about some things. We are. But how do we react? How fast do we react? How much can we slow down and reevaluate the situation and try to do it the right way by, by slowing that down there? In Proverbs chapter 14, verse 29, it says, He that is slow to wrath is of great understanding, but he that is hasty of spirit exalteth folly. Why would you exalt folly? Lift up being foolish, all right? They just have to vent their feelings. In Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 11, it says, A fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. Some people just have to be rambling on. Some people just have to express their opinion. We had this... This lady, when, when I was driving school bus, which that's all done now, but when I was driving school bus, there's 200 people that are, that are driving bus at the same time. There's 200 buses out there, or it might even be more than that, okay, that are on our particular radio frequency, and, you know, they're doing things, you know, if they get a new driver and they get lost, they're trying to get them in there or whatever. And there's this one lady <laughs> that no matter what anybody said, she had to put in her two cents, and it was just... It was dri it driving me crazy. I'm there, ah, yeah, be quiet. And, I know this, 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 and I'm yelling at the radio. There's no kids in my bus, you know, at that time, you know. And, and I, I got talking with another lady one time, and she, and she said the exact same thing. I didn't say it to her, but she said, this, this person. And, 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 uh, but some people just have to have that, that going all the time, that, that verbal diarrhea, all right? A fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. You know, there's, there's a lot, as, as I mentioned, in Proverbs chapter 26 about the fool. I want you to take your Bibles and come there with me, though. Okay, we're going to look specifically at, at verse 4 and verse 5. Because <clears throat> these can be kind of a confusing verse at first. It almost looks like one saying one thing and one saying another, but they're not. Chapter, four, or chapter 26, verse 4 and verse 5, it says, Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like him. Next verse, answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. So in one place it's saying, don't, don't answer a fool. And in another place it's saying, do answer a fool. It sounds contradictory, does it not? But it's not, all right? It's, it's talking about an answering a fool according to his folly or, or kind of getting into the, the, the same way that, that he is talking. But you know what? Sometimes when you're talking with a fool, Sometimes it's best just to nod your head and walk away. All right? And sometimes you need to step up and say, no, you're wrong. And it takes wisdom to have the discretion as to when you do one and when you do the other. Because as, as we said earlier, you can't debate with a fool. All right? And then you become like him. If, if, if you get into a, an argument back, back and forth, back and forth, and, and they, well, snow is black. No, it's not. It's white. No, no, it's black. All right? And, 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 it, you're wasting your time, all right? But at the same time, sometimes there's, there's times where you need to step in and say, look, what you're doing is wrong. You are defiling my God, all right? Jesus said, put it kind of this way one time, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 6, he says, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you, all right? 
Sometimes we need that discretion. We need that wisdom. When do we say something? And when do we not? And I, I, I've shared this before with you, and I, and I don't think it was that long ago, so I'll just kind of mention it in, in, in passing where there's, there's a guy at work. He's, he, was, he was just rotten to the core. That was his name, actually. <laughs> I called him rotten. But he went against my God and said something bad about my God, and I stood up and I lambasted him in front of everybody. A lot of times they'd let stuff go, but this time was not one of those times. And I ended up standing there preaching to all of these guys, and there was, you could hear a pin drop if I'd have stopped talking, all right? That was a time when you needed to stand up and say something. He didn't have an answer, because the answer I gave him was right from God's word, and I, and I shut him down because he was ripping apart my God. But there's other times where that, that, some of that kind of stuff can happen, and, and you would just be batting yourself in the wind there if, if you were to try to say something, all right? But it takes wisdom. And I'm not saying that I had any great wisdom. It was God that, that just kind of took over and said, preach. <laughs> but, you know, the, 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 point, the point is this, you know. Sometimes we need to make, we always need to have a stand for God. Sometimes we need to make that verbal. And sometimes you're just going to look like a fool if you get into a, an argument with another fool. And you don't want to be that, okay? Fools are proud and self-confident. If you're in chapter 26, look at chapter 28. It says, He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool, but whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. They're self-confident and that they know what's, what, what they're going to do, you know? And fools create problems and bring sorrow, especially to their parents especially to their parents. In Proverbs 10, verse 1, it says, The Proverbs of Solomon, A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. Our desire as, as parents ought to be what it tells us in chapter 27, verse 11. It says, My son, be wise and make my heart glad that I may answer him that reproacheth me. That ought to be our desire, is that our children will be wise, that our children will be godly, that's where wisdom is. Wisdom is godliness. Okay? Wisdom isn't education. Wisdom is, isn't experience even. Wisdom is being godly and, and understanding things from God's viewpoint. That's what true wisdom is. How many examples are given in Scripture? Can you give me a, a couple of examples in Scripture where the foolishness of the children was an absolute shame to their parents? I got about six of them listed here. Let's see if you can... Knit one of the ones that I've got or pick a different one that I, that I missed. Can you think of one? Alicia. Uh, Eli's sons. Eli's sons. That's one I didn't put down. That's a really good one. Eli's sons. They were, they were a total shame to Eli and the things that they were doing, and Eli didn't stop them from doing that. All right? Very good. Um, what was his name? Amnon. <laughs> and her name was... Who was her name? Uh, not, I was going to say Tabitha. It's not Tabitha. Her name was... Uh, Tamar. Tamar. Tamar, right. We got her, okay. Yeah, that, what a shame for David, okay. Someone else. Another example. Brother Ian. I have that listed there too. Samson, all right. What did what, Samson do? He, he fraternized with the enemies and he, he moved in and, and lived with, uh, with the, the vile women no, they could not have been happy with him, all right? Martina. Absalom, I have him listed there too. Absalom was tried to take over David's kingdom, all right? And David was in a, in a mess there. Remember when, when Absalom finally was killed by Joab? David was all upset about more, and, and uh, Joab come to him after. He said, you'd been happier if all of us had died and Absalom would have lived, all right? David was messed up, all right? Okay, he did. Wayne? Samuel's son, yeah? Samuel's son. Aaron's boys, yeah, very good. And they got offered the strange fire and God killed them. All right. Yeah, yeah, but over the whole, David was a wise man. But you're right, but they're, they're at, that, at that point, 
definitely would have been, he would have, it would have been a shame to his family as to what had happened there. All right. Okay. Good examples. Um, you got up. Oh, you missed. You missed one that I had. Well, I actually had Cain, but it's definitely heaviness to his. Did you have Cain? Yes. You're going to say Cain and Esau. What did Esau do to uh, be a heaviness to his parents? Remember what Esau did, Wayne? Yeah, he found out what they wanted, and so he goes and he marries two of these women that, that he knew the parents didn't want, all right, just to kind of spite them, all right? And we, we see that the fool, all right, they bring sorry, sorrow especially to their parents, okay? But in, so what, what, what can we do? What can be done with a fool, especially if, it, if the fool is someone that's close to us? What can we do about that? In Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 15, it says, foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. Now, now we need to understand something, that a lot of the things that are, that are in Proverbs, some people try to take them in and think that these are promises. These are principles, all right? These are principles that happen, and the, the principle here is simply that you, you, you must discipline your child if, if they're doing what's wrong, okay? And usually... That will suffice. But you know what? The child has a free will. And sadly, a lot of times, that, that child's free will dis decides to go in an opposite direction, even though you have tried and tried and tried to rebuke that child and to bring them under the correction. So it is, this, this is not a promise. This is a principle that usually works. All right? This, this, this is what you must do in order to fulfill your responsibility to help that child. All right? To, to spare the rod is to spoil a child. My dad used to say, I want to apply the, apply the rod of correction to the seed of understanding. That was my dad's line. You can imagine how that one goes. All right, but nonetheless, it, it's, it's, it's a command that, that we need to do in order to do our part, but this is a principle, all right? What about the foolish son or daughter that just won't listen? I, re I read this little quote, and, and maybe it's a, it, it, it sounds like something that people should have been saying for years. I don't know if it's right or if it's wrong. Or I know, if, I know it makes sense, but I'm, I'm not sure if this is original or not to, to this one book that I'd read. But it says, the same sun that melts the ice hardens the clay. You ever heard that before? Yeah. Wayne nods his head. Barb says no. All right, but <clears throat> sometimes what, what we do when we, when we follow what, 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 what the principles are there, it can, it can melt the heart and help them. And other times, that same thing with a different person, where they're, wherever their heart attitude is, they can, they can decide that they're going to go a different direction. All right? Now, I want you to take your Bibles and come with me to Luke chapter 15. Luke 15. A very familiar passage. This is talking about the prodigal son. And we know how it starts when the son wants to, wants to get his inheritance before he, his father dies and he gives him the inheritance and he goes off and he, and he blows it all in sin and, and degradation and doing whatever he can. And he gets to verse 16 and said, He would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. Let me ask you, where was this father when his son, the light finally came on, and his son said, the best place for me to go is back to my father? Where was he? Martina? Pardon me? He was waiting for him in the same place. He was still doing what he knew was right to do. Okay? If, if I can kind of interrelate that to us, it's still 
serving God, even though someone has gone the other way, when they finally come to their senses and they come back, you know where they need to find you? They need to find you still serving God. All right? They need to find you still serving God. Also, what was the father doing when the son came back? He was watching for him. Look at verse 20. It says, And he arose and came to his father, but when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him. What do you think his father was doing while his son was away? He was praying for him. He was there and he was looking for him to come back. All right? And it's so important that he was watching and not idly sitting there. I think he was praying daily for his son. I realize this is just a story that Jesus is talking about here. But the, the truths are here, okay? When he came back, how did his father greet him when he came back? With compassion. And he wanted him to be restored. Does it sit there? Does he, does he list off, look at man, you blew half of what I worked hard for. Did he say any of that kind of stuff? No. Bring forth a robe. Put it on him. All right? Put a ring on his finger. Shoes on his feet. Let's... Let's have a party and celebrate that he's come home. Now, his older brother didn't figure this was right, but that, that, that's not the, where, where I'm trying. I'm trying to show you where the father was here. The father was still serving God where he was supposed to be. The father was waiting and watching and praying for that person until they came back. And when they came back, they were willing to restore, eager to forgive and to restore. The fool has a choice to be a fool, but he can also escape the chains of being a fool, but it's his choice to do so. In Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 26, it says, He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool, but whoso walketh wisely shall be delivered. Shall be delivered. It is still their choice. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting. I told you I was going to give you some little stats. The word fool is found in our Bibles. Where do you, which book do you think has got the most often times the word fool is found in your Bible? Proverbs. 42 times the word fool is, is in the Bible. It is in Proverbs. The next highest is 14 times. Guess what book that was in? Not Psalms. Ecclesiastes, also written by Solomon. All right? Talks about the fool 14 times there. The next highest one is 2 Corinthians, and it's five times. Most books, I think Psalms only said twice. And I think it's in both those verses, 14 and, and, and 53. There might have been another one in there, but it doesn't make more than five. All right? But Solomon is warning against being the fool. But the fool, understand this. The fool is the choice of the individual. All right? But we need to pray for them. We need to pray for them. Whether they're our actual children or whether they're people that we know that have left. Like, what, like I mentioned when we talked about a couple of weeks ago, we're getting some of these people back that are going nowhere and have, and have turned their back on God. We need to be praying for them. And they need to know when they come back, we're still here. We're still here. Serving God. Putting God first. Brother Ian. That's what we need, all right? And be looking for them and wanting restoration, not retribution. Look what you did. How do you hurt me? No. It's, let's get this right and welcome home. We love you. That's what it's about. Yeah. All right? Let's pray. Precious Father, I thank you for your goodness and, and Lord, for this little study and, and your